Hey guys! Hey Total Beauties! <laughs> it's Mary and Allie and we're here today with a very very special guest from Fiona Styles, and um, <laughs> she's going to be sharing um, some of her, her look, can't speak, um, some of her makeup tips for us and we're going to do um, a contouring tutorial so if you have any questions along the way please feel free to leave them in the comments and we will um, try to answer them. Absolutely. Um, so Tell us about what you're going to do to Allie. Allie has amazing skin. It's like Hater. paper. It's <laughs> incredible. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to show how my sheer contour, uh, contouring palette, um, this one I'm going to use light and medium. It is our sheer sculpting palette. It's so funny because we have 120 SKUs and I do know the names of all of them, but then <laughs> when I'm put on the spot, I can never remember. Like, um, hey. uh, so I'm going to use the palest one on Allie and just to show that you can really actually contour on pale girls. Pale girls always get left out in the contour world. Yeah. Everything is too dark and streaky. And then um, I'll also use a little bit of a highlighting palette and we will play with a contour palette on her eyes just so you can see how you can use it for really pretty depth and it's a multi-purpose, um, multitasking product. And then I'm going to do a really fun, like, smoky blue eye on her. Uh, which I cannot wait for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. be super fun. Yeah. yeah. We're okay. so excited. So let's get started. Let's do it. So first I will use, I like to use um, a nice sort of tapered brush for a contour. The more tapered it is, the better. And this is from Hakuhodo. Uh, and it is a really, really, really beautiful brush. So I'm going to use the lightest shade. And I never, ever, ever blow on my brushes. I always tap them. Why is that? Germs. Oh, gosh. Also, basically, I'd be like spitting on my brush, yeah. putting it on your face. <laughs> oh, man. It's yeah. not very nice. Oh, sorry, I have a little brush here. Oh. Something else for me to think about. I mean, I guess it's different if it's you, but still, you're no, spitting on your brush so and putting it on your face. It's so I always tap it on my bracelets or tap it on the compact or the sink or the counter or whatever. Also, this is getting excess product off. It's going to make it easier for you to get a good amount of product without overdoing it. You can always, always add more, but taking away is really challenging. So before Allie, oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> we get right up in Super there. This is an intimate gathering. <laughs> exactly. So before we started, I just gave her a little bit of a touch up with um, the number 01 Luminous Foundation. I decant everything because I carry around a really big suitcase full of makeup that's off in the corner. <laughs> so I take everything out of glass and ours come in really beautiful glass bottles. So this is my Luminous Foundation Concentrate in 01, which is a perfect match for her skin. And then I used the Brightening Stilo for um, a little bit of brightness under her eyes. And again, this one was um, neutral, which is 01 and 02. So for all of my foundations, powders, um, concealers and brightening products, they're all numbered. So the system works that if you're an, a one in the foundation, you're a one in the powder, you're a one in the concealer, you're a one in the brightening steel. Same thing if you're an eight. I wanted to take the um, sort of mystery out of how to find your concealers and all of your face products. So by so using helpful. numbers, you can just say, I'm a five in the foundation, I know I'm a five in the concealer, I know that I'm 05, 06 in the powder, et cetera, et cetera. So, Trying to make it a little easier for my lovely ladies out there. Okay, back to contouring. All right. So if you turn that way for me a little bit, Allie. These colors have a really beautiful, gentle taupe undertone. It's a little bit cold. And because she's so fair, you can actually see that there's a little bit of warmth to it on her, which is so crazy because it's such a beige color. <laughs> yeah, it looks so light on in the palette. Yes. Yeah. But it works for her. Well, they're sheer. I mean, I just found that on the market there were so many contour products that were so heavily pigmented, mm -hmm. like eyeshadow, and it's not eyeshadow. It's meant yeah. to be yeah. believable and um, undetectable and really look like you and not you wearing a lot of makeup. So that's the whole point behind that. So I just put a little bit on. Basically you want to kind of follow this line from the center of the ear to the corner of the mouth and just sort of follow this very gently. And if you mess up a little bit or you feel like you have too much on, I'll take a foundation brush that has a little bit of product on it, and then just use that to blend it a little bit. I'm going to sneak over to the other side. So far, so good. So I'll do the most most concentrated area here, sort of next to the, I'm sure it has a name. Anybody know the name of this mm -hmm. part of your ear? Trigus. This part? Trigus. Oh. Trigus. 
And this is your philtrum, if you didn't know. Oh, that. I did not know that. Yeah, it's called your philtrum. One Anatomy of the first, lesson. One of the first words my daughter learned. <laughs> <laughs> your little makeup Child. artist. Little makeup artist. <laughs> um, okay, so we're going to go from the tragus, kind of towards the center of the mouth again. This is where you want the most concentration, and then gently feather it. Is there an end point? It really depends. I usually stop kind of around uh -huh. here. It, it, I mean, you just don't want a line like right. that. That's just like your right general your trajectory. <laughs> you don't want to look now, like on that. women of color, if we're doing a heavy contour, I usually do it first with foundation and concealers. And I will actually draw a line here, but I will blend it so much and so seamlessly that you would never, ever know that. It just depends on how much makeup you're putting on and how you're doing. That is an advanced maneuver, and I don't <laughs> recommend it. <laughs> So, so I, I feel like contouring has been popular like in recent years. How long, you know, you've been in the biz for a long time. How long have you been doing it? And was it kind of surprising to you when finally like the masses became interested in contouring? Well, you know, I started doing makeup in the 90s, mm -hmm. just at the tail end of the whole supermodel thing. So makeup in the 90s was like lip balm on your eye, some press some, um, some, um, moisturize under your cheeks and maybe curl a lash and brush a brow and that was sort of it. It was very minimalist, it was very British. Dick Page was at the height of his, well, I mean, he's still at the height of his career, but Dick Page was a very innovative makeup artist. Pat McGrath was being very innovative and not doing a lot of, you know, this very glamazon makeup that was happening in the 80s. I'm sorry, I should close that so it's not flashing all the behind <laughs> the scenes. Um, so, you know, when I first started doing makeup, that wasn't in the vernacular at all. And then it became very neutral, and then, you know, we've just sort of advanced in the last mm -hmm. few years. And I think contouring is a great, great trick. I do think it's been overdone. And if you can find a way to do it so that it's believable and flattering, then it's a wonderful, wonderful asset and tool. But it's, there is some contour abuse out there. <laughs> Call the hotline. Friends, 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 friends over. Yes. <laughs> right. Oh my goodness. Okay, so now I'm going to use the Light Illusion Prism Palette. So pretty. We have three shades in here, and again, these are not meant to be blush. They are very, very gentle highlighting shades that so I want it to look like mm -hmm. you are glowing, not your makeup. So. I did these three shades just so you could play a little bit with warmth. One is a slightly pinker, cooler shade. One is a little bit of a peachy shade. And then there's a bronzer that has more pigment to it and more shimmer to it. So I like to use these on the eye. I'll play with them on the body. I'll use them all over the place. But they're not meant to be this epic um, disco ball effect. If you turn that way. Mm -hmm. So you can see that it gives a really soft, pretty, pretty sheen to the skin. And because Allie is so fair, you can actually see the pink. <laughs> <laughs> you are meant to see a little bit of it. It's just not meant to have the payoff of a blush. Mm -hmm. Just applying it like to her like brow yeah. bone, or not brow bone. Her cheekbone. Bone. And I, sometimes I like to do a little bit back <laughs> here. And then I'll also sometimes pop a little bit on the bridge of the nose for a little bit of extra soft, gentle sheen. And the other thing I think about contour is that you want it to be multi-dimensional, right? You don't want it to just be a streak here. So if you do a little highlighter and you do a little blush, then you have this really believable multi-dimensional look that is going to sell the look more than just having a big contour streak. <laughs> streak. Yeah. I'm guilty of that sometimes, I think. The contour streak? <laughs> when I'm in a hurry. I mean, look, all bets are off when you're in a hurry, right? What are you going to do? So again, super gentle. Very, very pretty, very natural looking. We can actually yeah. just pop a little bit. I'll use this as a base look down. I'll do this as a base on the lid. And then when we move into the contour on her eyes, we'll have a little gentle sheen there to start. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Already look kind of more glowy and, and awake. And That's good because I was feeling very tired. <laughs> so I'll give you a little lift off. Okay. This is the Ultra Lux Nourishing Lip Balm. Oh, sorry. Ooh, me. That feels nice. really nice. Super nice. Lots of cushion to it. No fragrance. Um, it's not greasy. 
it's no, great it's not to all. use. Feel it. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. great to use um, before you start your makeup, and you know I always do lips last, so I always let it sink in, and sometimes I'll just put the extra into my cuticles, which is nice. Good tip. Yes. Yeah. Always nice to have something that you can use for something else. That's what the makeup artist is always tend to do. <laughs> now, do you usually start? I know that we're focusing on contouring. Do you usually yeah. start with face makeup or do you start with eye makeup? I do. And I know okay. that some people like to start yeah. with eyes in case there's fall off. Right. Um, I need to see a blank canvas before uh -huh. I start. And sometimes mm -hmm. while I'm doing cheeks and contouring, I'm looking at someone's features and I'm thinking about how I want them to look or what I need to do if I have to kind of correct anything or what okay. I can do to bring out their best assets. So I actually use that time also to figure out what the rest of the look is going to be. Um, I have tried doing an eye first if I'm going to do a heavy eye, and it just throws me off. It yeah, just throws yeah. off my game. Um, I would rather actually just take off the foundation underneath if it gets messy and mm -hmm. clean up than, makes sense. than start that way. I don't know. That makes, no, yeah. that makes sense. I also know some people will do a whole eye, the whole thing. Before. And then and then do the other side. Like I just I can't oh, wrap my head around. Oh, I have to go back and forth and look yeah, and balance. The same, and, yeah. yeah, but I know there are some people that'll just do the uh -huh. whole look on one eye and then they'll start the other. Because uh -huh. <laughs> everyone's different. That's why you know when they say makeup rules or they ask us for tips, uh -huh. it's, it's really hard. We all do things differently. Some mm -hmm. people say I never use a primer. Some people say I always use a primer. Mm -hmm. It's really personal. So that's why you always get sort of contrarian um, answers from us. Or they seem conflicting because <laughs> that's fair. Everyone's, everyone's oh, got their thing. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go back to the contour palette. I'm going to do the middle shade. And I'll start on the outer corner of the eye. I usually start here because, 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 because. This is where you want the most concentration of color anyway. You don't ever want to start in the middle of the eye because that's probably where you don't want the most concentration of color. So, what I love about this is that it's sheer. So you can get this really pretty definition on the eye without it looking like too much. Can you open mm -hmm. Are you applying it in like a C shape? Or? Yep, kind of a little C shape. So I start here like really right here and then I will sweep it into the crease and a little bit. It's more like a V than a she. A, a she. <laughs> more like a V than a C because I kind of do this. And then just bring it in and blend it up. Open. Sorry. So you get a little soft definition on the eye. Maybe I'll take the darker one. This might look a little bit orange on you because you're so fair. It's looking nice. Open? Yeah, just very... But it's really soft and pretty. Yeah. I'm just showing that it's versatile and that you can use it in other ways. It's all about multitasking here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well I like to get the most out of products. And I'm always, just trying to use things in a different way, just because it's fun. Let me clean that up yeah. under there. So what kind of things do you think about? I mean, this is a very big question, probably the big answer, <laughs> but when you are coming up with your, you know, makeup products, what what's the priority for you? Um, usability, honestly. Like, as much as I love going to sun counters and seeing products that are electric blue or bright mm -hmm. green or hot pink, um, like for the, like a hot pink eyeshadow, it's, it's really, like, it's like a flower to be. It brings you to the counter, but it's mm -hmm. not really wearable. So for me, I wanted everything that I made to be really wearable and um, user-friendly. That was the other thing. I know that women are still really intimidated by makeup, and mm -hmm. it was important to me to make makeup that was not intimidating, even though it's coming from a makeup artist. So that's my, that's what I count on while I'm in the lab and while I'm working on stuff. I really want to make sure that the products are sheer but buildable so that if someone wants just a whisper of color, they can have that, or if they want a lot of color, they can have that. Just do just really fast. And then I'm gonna put a little a little bit more blush on you. Okay. <laughs> what are your Desert Island makeup brushes? I'm sure, like we, we talked before mm -hmm. we went live, that <laughs> you have a ton of brushes. Um, if you could only like have a couple, what do you feel like are the most important? Well, I love the MAC 217 eye brush, which is this one. I've done an Instagram post where I think I've got 30 of these, maybe. Oh, yeah. I have so <laughs> many of these brushes <laughs> because I can use them to do concealer. I can use them to buff something. I can use them on the eye. I can use them um, with a cream product. I can use them with a powder product. So this one is really my favorite. Um, Hakuhodo makes really beautiful 
uh, brushes. It's a Japanese brush company. Troy Surratt makes incredible brushes. His are also made in Japan. And Jenny Patinkin also makes good ones. Um, but yeah, that, that MAC one is great. And the Hakuhodo contour brush I love. Go -tos. So I'm just using a little bit of Valley, which is a soft bronzy color. Just warm me up a little bit. So we've got highlighter, contour, and blush, and that is the trifecta that makes it look really pretty and believable. Just the way the light is catching it is very pretty. Yeah, and they all have, um, I think I only have one or two, I have one matte blush shade, and then I have two bronzers that have no shimmer in them because I feel like bronzer should be matte. The sun does not put sparkle on your face, yeah. and if you're <laughs> trying to warm your skin up, then you want to be able to put it anywhere on your face and not just on the places that would be radiant. So I feel like if you want a, an illuminating bronzer, use an illuminating bronzer where you want it, but for a face bronzer, I like a matte one. Yeah, and it makes sense. If you're contouring with a bronzer too, you want it to be matte. And That's right. Shimmery. That's right. Makes sense. Yeah. I'm going to use a little bit of my brow pencil. I'm using Ash Blonde. What do we call it? Blonde? We actually call it Blonde Ash. <laughs> and I love an ashy pencil because most hair has an ashy undertone. Yeah. I heard somewhere that you should, I, I used to go for like very like dark brown eye pencils and then uh -huh. until somebody told me like I should actually be leaning more toward like a blonde, like lighter. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. I, yeah. You want to make sure it doesn't have too much red in it uh -huh. though because then it'll read really red if it's lighter. Um, I think the most important thing is the consistency of the pencil. This one is a very sheer pencil. So mm -hmm. you can see that you don't really see a lot of pigment on the skin. Nice. I find that some eyebrow pencils are almost as opaque as an eyelining pencil. <laughs> <laughs> and that is just going to yeah. mess it up for people. You know what I yeah. mean? How are you supposed to get that right? You're really setting people up for failure. And again, I wanted this to be mistake free, easy to use, and non intimidating. What is your favorite product from your collection? Um, I love the Radiant Aqua Eye Veil just because it's a really interesting product and the makeup nerd in me loves it. Uh, I can show you that later. Yeah. But I use the foundations every day at work. Mm -hmm. And there's something I'm really proud of because there's a matte formulation, but it's not so matte that. It's corpsey, uh -huh. and the luminous foundation is gently luminous. I have oily skin, and I can wear it without looking like a crazy person. That Turn this way for me. That's good. Bit. Not to look like a corpse, and not to look crazy. Right. Yes. I mean, some people want a matte foundation that is literally uh -huh. like, like a matte right. paint, mm -hmm. and that's, you know, all, hey man, everybody, you do you, but I really want things to be believable and look beautiful. The foundation feels really light, like on, I have it on, it's so lightweight. It's super lightweight. Yeah. I don't like feeling makeup on my skin. Yeah. I feel like none of this makeup on my face right now, like it doesn't feel like anything. Yeah, it's, very, light. it's yeah. very lightweight. I feel like that's a trend really lately, it's like people want to have like these, want to yeah. look like somewhat done up, yeah. but feel like they're not wearing anything at all. And that's asking a lot. That is. Yes. <laughs> that is asking quite a bit. <laughs> but hey, we, I feel like there are good products out there. That's there lot. are. There are. And they do deliver. But it's, but you know, at the end of the day, it is makeup. And it is a makeup product. Mm -hmm. And you, you know, as hard as we work in the labs to make it as wearable as possible. Sometimes when someone's like, my foundation didn't last for 20 hours. I'm like, it's makeup. <laughs> it's, 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 it's something sitting on your face. You are going to have to touch it up. I'm sorry. Um, okay, this is the Artist Eyeshadow Quad, and I'm going to so use pretty. this one in the palette. This is Oceanus. Pretty. And this is sort of um, a teal blue. It's a really, really pretty versatile color. So... Um, this on. How did you, one of the parts I love the most about beauty is all of the pretty makeup names. Uh -huh. um, mm -hmm. Was that very important to you? And did you have like a strategy for coming up with It with was, names? and I did. So um, I lived in New York for a very long time. Um, I was there for I think 13 years. And I've been in LA for I think 
almost 12 years. Oh, wow. I can't remember. I can't remember. Time is so nebulous <laughs> to me these days. Um, and so these are all named after LA street names and New York City street names. Oh, I love that. Mm -hmm. I'm also a New York City expat, so yes. I can appreciate that. I have a lipstick called 22nd, which is the last street I lived on. Aww. And did you know there are these really amazing walk streets in New York? These little, because I, I was there's, looking at maps, so uh -huh. like there's um, really beautiful little carless streets. One's called Palmander Walk. Oh, um, another one is called Love Lane, which is the lipstick I have on. And oh, the, they're cool. mostly uptown. Well, that's why I don't uh -huh. know. <laughs> and they're sort of in between buildings. Oh, how cool. Yeah, it's really cool. I want to kind of draw a map of where all of the shade names are. That would be fun. Do you have anything named for anything in the East Village? Lower East Side. Um, what do I have? I have Orchard. Okay. Okay, so even though this is like super, super teal in the pan, it looks like a brownie color on her because there's a purple flip pearl in here. So it has a little bit of teal, but also a really pretty purpley brown, which I love. It makes it really versatile. It's not too, it's, it's got some sheerness. Yeah. It seems. It's very wearable. It's kind of fussy. Mm -hmm. Look up. And then um, I named some products, you've heard all this before, Allie, but I named <laughs> some <for> products <laughs> after family members and friends. Oh. <clears throat> so there's a street in LA called Mumet Ahiko. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> which is down in Santa Monica. Uh -huh. <laughs> and my dog's name is Mumet Ahiko. <laughs> Love it. So awesome. I named a bronzer Ahiko. And my husband's name is Andrew, and there's a St. Andrew's Street with him. So he got. Um, he got a color, Ooh. and my friend's son's name is Arrow, so I named one Arrow. So it, it just happens that there are street names yeah, <laughs> that match my friend's names, which is great. My friend Rachel Goodwin, who's an incredibly talented makeup artist, I, there's a street called Goodwin, so I gave her a lipstick. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that's super that's duper cool. fun. Maybe that's really my, my life goal, is just to have some kind of makeup name after me. That's right, <laughs> that's right. It made it a much more interesting process for me when I thought of that. I was like, oh, now there's a connection instead of yeah. seashell pink or whatever. That's great. Okay, look up for me, please. Mm -hmm. I'm just smoke this out a little bit. I'm surprised by this, again, just looks so wearable. And right? Looking at the palette, I wouldn't have, have guessed it would be so, you know, blue, I think, is intimidating sometimes, right. um, but this looks great. Right. Well, I'll go in with a deeper navy, so you'll really get yeah. to see yeah. the color, but... I know, I'm always kind of afraid to wear blue yeah, I'm just show you eyeshadow. Like, so you okay. Oh. oh, wow. Yeah, that just has, like, a really subtle... The iridescent, nice? yeah, so it's, it's like almost mermaid. Mermaid, yeah. That's right. It totally has oh, a mermaid. Yeah. You want to yeah. close your eyes so we can mm -hmm. get really get in on there? Maybe move So, again, eyes. even though this this palette looks really like someone might be like, mm, I don't know, it makes me a little nervous, it has a lot of wearability to it. Uh -huh. So, that was all really important. So, I'm going to go in for this one, which is a little bit. I'm surprised I have morbid. your mascara, and I believe it's purple. Oh, you have more? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I was at first like, uh oh. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this, but yep. it actually, again, like, it's super wearable. Like, it's yep. it gives me the definition, but also it's not too like it. I don't know how to describe it. I actually, that's right. Today, it's still I don't know, and with like greenish eyes, it it really works very well. So I did that instead of a brown mascara because I find that brown mascara doesn't do anything for the eyes, mm. whereas. Um, Whereas purple, burgundy, makes blue eyes really twinkly and makes green eyes extra, extra vivid and green and adds a really pretty sort of smoldery quality to um, brown eyes. So brown mascara just doesn't really do anything mm -hmm. for anybody's eyes. I am going to say this. I hate brown mascara. <laughs> um, oh, I feel understand. like it... Oh. <laughs> uh, it just like always makes my it brings out like the red in my that's eyes right. for some mm. reason and it just makes me look not not pretty that's right, that's right. <laughs> I just don't like it I yeah. Get it. yeah I don't like it either um, and the other place that I'll use the colored mascara is I'll do black on top and then the work Whoa. on the bottom so yeah. it's not as heavy because people, people are afraid yeah. of mascara on the bottom lashes mm -hmm. I embrace it wholeheartedly and um, 
That way you can have a little bit of a softer color on the bottom lashes. It's a like yeah. yeah. What's your normal face? What's your normal makeup routine? For me? Uh -huh. mm. <laughs> Minimal. Mm. It, if I'm not working, I don't really wear a lot of makeup. Um, if I'm working, I wear the number four luminous foundation and Madison setting powder. Um, I will use a little bit of Outpost, which is the Radiant Aqua Eye Veil, for a tiny bit of contour. And then um, I'll do a little bit of a cream blush. And uh, I use our brow gel, which is amazing. It's a universal brow wax. Because um, I like a nice, full, defined brow. Yeah, it's very in right now, too. Yeah. Now I was kind of uh, asking a lot of questions while you were doing this, but so you did you take the you took a darker shade over I the did. and I just used... kind of the same mm -hmm. path. Yep, and I did that sort of V shape again. Um, that V shape on the outer corner of the eye. And it added a really pretty soft definition, but again, nothing too extreme. Yeah. yeah. Looks great. And then I can take a little bit of this one. I can take a little bit of this pale blue one. I'm just going to ask you about that. Look up a little bit. And I can pop it in here oh. for a little bit of brightness. Look down for me. So are your quads designed to be used kind of in this way? I guess most quads are with the lightest color kind of as like the inner corner highlight. Yeah, totally. I Or you could use it alone. So I wanted them to all look up, be able to work well together. And I wanted them all to be really pretty by themselves. There you go. So it adds a little bit of brightness in there. Pretty. And if you wanted to do a little more drama, Always up for drama. Always yeah. drama. I love I lots of family something. drama and then pass. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Um, I'm going to take our eyeliner, which is a waterproof eyeliner. And this is St. Andrews, and it's this really beautiful, Ooh, dirty teal. Okay, that's beautiful. So it kind of looks black from one angle, and then it has some life to oh, it, which wow. is really nice. The one named after your husband. That's right. <laughs> oh. Look up for me. So I'm going to go in her waterline. And you line all the way across. I do. Tell me if it just gets to be too torturous. You okay? Yep. I'm good. And then sometimes what I'll do with eyeliner is I'll put it on my hand and then take a tight lining brush. Look up. Or even a flat concealer brush. And I'll use this to get in here in between mm -hmm. the lashes. This formula is super duper duper creamy too. So a little goes a long way. So you typically do the waterline and then... The well, if we're doing a little drama, yeah. yeah. I like to blend it down from the waterline mm -hmm. most of the time. It depends on the look, honestly, and the person's eye shape. Not everyone looks great with um, liner on the waterline. Mm -hmm. It can be a little severe. If it, you have maybe smaller eyes, does, mm -hmm. it, does it work? Does it work? So what I will do is if someone has smaller eyes or it just might seem a little bit aging, mm -hmm. I will use a taupe liner on the inside of the eyes mm. because again, it's not as severe, but you can still get a really beautiful closed up kind of almond shaped eye without the heaviness of black or even brown or even gray. Yeah, this is nice. It's a little bit soft. Do you have any, do you line the top water line too? I, I will do it on people. Look up for me, honey. I know you're just about to spill over, aren't you? No, I'm good. You're good? I'm good. Um, I will if they can handle it. Sometimes I'll have them do it. I was going to say, do you have any tips for lining your own top waterline? Because I can do yes. the bottom, but... Just top. put it on the lower lash, uh, the lower waterline, uh -huh. close your eyes, and just wiggle it back and forth. Okay. Oh. Mm-hmm. Okay, look down. Mm -hmm. And then I'll just do a little bit here. And I'll pull it out a little bit. 
blending it out. Mm -hmm. I almost never use an eyeliner um, entirely on its own. I always like a brush to manipulate the pigment. Yeah, seems like it's moving very easily. Mm -hmm. And then once this is on, it is on. Mm -hmm. Good, let's see. <laughs> Very mermaid. Do the same on the other side. It is a little mermaidy. I'm always. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh, it makes your eyes so pretty. Yeah. And I don't really love a hard top line unless I'm doing a very graphic look. Mm -hmm. I always soften it up a little bit. I just think it can look really severe. I think it's a lot more flattering to have it be softer. And you get that softness from the uh, using the brush with it? Yes. Yeah. I fuzz it out a little bit. Mm, that's a great tip. And then you can also take a little bit more. So pretty. I hope you have plans today. Yeah, I know. I'm going to have to have, make some. <laughs> and then I'll just take a little bit more of this shade. Put it down. And even soften that a little bit more. So using that shade to sort of blend a little bit. Yeah, more. just to soften that line again. Okay. I love the color. Mm -hmm. yeah. So pretty. I'm going to actually have the Worth Mascara here, oh. so you can see how it's this Ooh, deep yeah. burgundy plum. You can vouch for this. <laughs> <laughs> Look down. I'll just add a little bit more to your lashes. I love this mascara. It doesn't run or flake or move on me all day, and everything, everything, everything runs and flakes and moves on yeah. me. I, I mean, I'm constantly testing products, so not, not just for me, I mean, like, I Chop, try out everything anyone sends me, and I always go back to my mascara. I feel like I, I get a lot of drama with it. Mm hmm. Pick up a little bit. Yeah. Actually, I prefer to do this. So I'll bend my mascara wand. Ooh. Yeah, for lower <laughs> lashes, and then I'll usually brace myself against something. So I'm going to brace myself against mm -hmm. your leg because I'm up on my tippy toes. But if you bend it like this, it's a lot easier to get yeah. to your. I always struggle with low, lower lashes. Yeah, I always get it all over. That's great. And if I, I'm not sure how much detail people at home can see, but mm. it is purple, but it's not like it doesn't look like something you wore. It's, as a no, yeah. exactly, exactly. Let me sneak over this side. And it's nice because it softens this yeah, look a little bit because it, it is a little bit of a dramatic look. Right. Black could be extra dramatic. That's right. So it's just a little bit softer. Very pretty. <laughs> Sorry for my dirty eyes. <laughs> dirty eyes. I was trying to do it slow so everyone could see, but then I was like, yeah. I'm going too fast. It looks like I'm dirty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. And then I always feel like when you have a strong eye, you know, just take it down a notch in the lip department. So, Very good rule yeah. Thing. Don't want to look like you're too dolled up. That's right. <laughs> Let me use my. You have a lot of pigment in your lips, which is very Thank fortunate. You. <laughs> you don't have to worry about lipstick too often. I always blessed in a lot of ways. <laughs> I know. Department. Skin, <laughs> eyes, lips. So I'm going to use um, my contouring lip pencil. It's a creamy, long-wearing contouring lip pencil in Donya Amelia. So it, it comes in multiple shades. It does. This is just the lightest one. And do you want to pick something that's like close to your skin color, close to your, like lighter than your lip color or match your lip color? When you're doing a pale lip? Mm -hmm. uh, well, she has so much color in her lips that I wanted to go with something very, gotcha. very light. It just depends on your lip color. But, and sometimes you wouldn't even need a lip pencil if you're doing a, um, a nude look. But again, there was so much pigment in mm -hmm. Allie's lips that I wanted to take it down a little bit. Mm. And then I will use 
I've never really thought about people's lip pigment before. I've been really yeah. Oh, sometimes it's a real struggle trying yeah. to do a new lip on someone who has a lot, a lot, a lot of red in their lips. So this is Normandy. This is the Hydra Shine lip pen, um, lipstick. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Nice. Do you have a preference for, uh, like, shiny lip, matte lip? Well, when you're doing a nude, you either want a sort of a semi-matte uh -huh. or something with a little bit more shine in it so it doesn't look chalky. It can go, again, kind of corpsey uh -huh. pretty quick. So you want something that's got a little bit of life to it. So mm -hmm. it's either, like, a demi-matte or a soft matte. But, yeah. Yeah, that makes matte sense. Matte yeah. is pretty intense for a pair. <laughs> for a pair. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> you need to go on a date. Yeah, I know. Oh, I, I do. Lee, Lee, if you're watching. If you're watching this, Lee this boyfriend. Ooh. <laughs> oh, sorry, just Boss's orders. <laughs> um, well, this is a gorgeous look. Um, yeah, I can't wait to see I mean, I haven't seen it, oh, but I'm assuming sure. I'm going to love it. Thank you. Oh, my God. I love it. Hmm? That lip color is amazing. Yeah. It's so good, right? Yeah. I normally mm -hmm. stay away from like nudes or like really yeah. pale lip color because I just feel like I'm so pale that right. I, I'm worried about it, but I love the way that this one looks. Oh, good. And the blue, again, is like not too blue, but you get that really yeah. nice, pretty hint of it. Yeah. Ugh. The iridescence is just Yeah, so it's so it's pretty. Just... And the blue in the corner. It's yeah. really wearable. It doesn't yeah. look wearable in the in the palette. Yeah, I know. I would really, pick up that really palette is. and be like, yeah. I don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. But then, yeah, this is what you do with it. You do this, <laughs> and it looks amazing. <laughs> Excellent. Um, so we should say that um, all of Fiona Styles' makeup is available exclusively, right? Yep. At yep. Ulta. And Ulta.com. Ulta. 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 Um, yeah. So anything we used here, you can um, get yourself, get yourself, and then you can always replay this video yeah. to... <laughs> you know, see how she did it. But um, thank you so much, yeah, thank you for so joining much. us. This is lovely. Lovely. Any, any parting words you want to leave with our, with our viewers? Yeah, it's just makeup. It washes off. Have fun. Don't take it too seriously. <laughs> Excellent advice. <laughs> so uh, until next time, uh, I'm Mary. I'm Allie. And I'm uh, Fiona. She's Fiona. <laughs> see you later. Bye. Bye.